by Molly Parker. Lee Enterprises Midwest This article was produced for ProPublica's local reporting network in partnership with Lee Enterprises. Sign up for dispatches to get stories like this one as soon as they are published. It is the last Friday in higher res. And barges filled with mounds of glistening coal sat parked in the Ohio River below Lee Esther. Logan's high-rise public housing apartment complex in Cairo, Illinois. Wispy white clouds streaked a baby blue sky. The panoramic waterfront view is one that normally gives Logan peace as she takes it comes from the brown recliner on her balcony. But on the day I visited her, Logan wasn't at all. She was anxious. Two days prior, shipping from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development had called Logan and about 60 of her fellow public housing residents to a meeting. An engineering assessment has eliminated that the Connell F. Smith SR building may not be structurally sound right to withstand an eraser. The federal government plans to show their home, and they have to exit out by early next year. The federal housing officials told them on the building mostly houses seniors and comes with lines, and is also home to a small number of children and their pace. Officials told the residents they'd get vouchers and moving assistance. But that's of little irritations to the many residents who like to stay in Cairo. Lee Esther Logan has lived her whole life in one. Julia Rendelman for ProPublica. Since its population peaked at 15,000 residents in the 1920s, Cairo has faced decades of price and economic decline. It's now one of the poorest cities in Illinois and its population has switched to about 1,600. There's no grocery store or gas station, and most streams for the high-rise residents facing eviction. There's an extreme shortage of safe rental options. That means that under HUD's plan, most residents will have to move at least 30 miles away to find available units in other towns of public housing complexes or private market rentals. The decision sent residents reeling. Logan's close-knit, majority black town sits at the confluence of the Mississippi and Ohio rivers. Especially the borders of Illinois, Kentucky and Missouri meet. When newcomers visit, they're often struck by the blight of a hollowed-out city. Streets lined with boarded-up homes. Vacant buildings and empty lots. The Smith Building itself creates a bit of history. Not all because it good. Constructed in fact, it's named for a former housing authority board member who, the decade before, had affixed a flashing neon arrow to his garage roof. It begins at the home of an attorney who was working to integrate Cairo's public schools alongside Thurgood Marshall. In an older, Langston Hughes described it as a four-foot, red arrow of bigotry. But for residents, and strong sense of community remains. Cairo is known regionally for its historic churches, some of which still not a spirited crowd on Sundays. Ties to American history, music quality, acclaimed barbecue and standout high school basketball teams over the years. It's one of the few small towns in southern Illinois to offer a children's orchestra and ballet. Lessons. A public housing high-rise, planned for demolition, sits on the base of the Ohio River. Julia Rendelman for ProPublica. For many of the white and people with disabilities who live at the Smith Building, the prospect of factors out of town. For some, the only place they've ever lived is daunting. A lot of them are additional. I'm scared. Said before. 55. A disabled woman who has spent her entire life here. I don't want to leave Cairo. I heard many neighbors echo her concerns as I knocked on doors that afternoon. Then I don't know that I'm gone now go. I'm 83 years old. Said Harry, Mac, McDowell Jr. A retired car salesman who is still be the death of his wife in July and who is dreading having to. Apartment shop and move during the holidays. Few federal agencies have a mission so squarely aligned with what Cairo needs to uplift disadvantaged people and places and, as HUD describes it on its website, to deliver on America's dreams, but HUD has led generations of Cairo residents downtime and 
again. And although HUD could oversee the building of new apartments in the city, it has no need to do that. I was once a thriving city. Now, its streets are easy to boarded up buildings and vacant lots. Julia Rendelman for ProPublica. Cairo isn't just another Midwestern river town befallen by hard economic luck. The storied epicenter of a region colloquially known as Little Egypt. Cairo holds a central place in the American story. The town, the most southern point in a northern state, was a key station. The Underground Railroad and a Midwestern staging area for Gen. Ulysses S. Grant's Union armies along the Mississippi Artery. It had been a mostly white city until thousands of formerly enslaved black Americans fled on. Steamers headed north along the Mississippi River during the height of the war. The federal government sent them to Cairo and housed them in what were called contraband camps. Shanty tents set up. The riverbanks where people had little to eat and disease ran rampant. At the war's end, the camps disbanded and many people left. But at least 3,000 black Americans stayed in Cairo and established a vibrant, though largely segregated, community of churches, schools and businesses. By the early 1900s, nearly 40% of the population was black, and the strongly organized community leveraged its political power to win elected seats in town. Despite those gains, White supremacists maintained the balance of Cat 5 and troubleshooters that Cairo's black population remained locked out of the best jobs and public schools. Jim Crow era policies that followed Reconstruction remained firmly rooted in Cairo well. They'd begun to unravel elsewhere. Housing discrimination was a common thread. If the 1940s, the town built two large family housing complexes. One for black families using cheap wood materials at the site of the old, contraband camp, and one for white families built of plus. In 1972, the U.S. Civil Rights Commission held hearings in the town. Numerous black citizens testified about being forced to live without the segregated and dilapidated public housing complex. They were terrorized by rodents and white vigilantes who for say, fired into the apartment complex from the Mississippi levee, shattering windows and streets lights, to buy a black civil rights leader and his followers who lived there. The commission concluded that federal housing officials had known about the town's defiance of federal fair housing laws for years but done little. More than 40 years later, I, along with several colleagues from the Southern Illinoisan, documented unsafe conditions in the same buildings cited in the federal report. They had fallen into even worse disrepair. There were severe foundational issues. Homes were overrun with eye river and roaches. Doctors expressed alarm at the number of mothers bringing in children with asthma and other breathing problems from mold. The heating system was so poor that many families used their gas ovens to stay warm in the winter. Similar to the Commission's findings, our reporting revealed that HUD had known about problems and done well. In 2016, on the heels of our investigative series, HUD exercised its rarely utilized authority to remove the housing authority based in Cairo from local control and place it into federal receivership. Images of riverboats hang in a hallway of the high rise building that HUD plans to demolish. Julia Rendelman for speakers are a year now. Under President Donald Trump and his HUD secretary, Ben Carson, the federal agency announced the closure of two family housing complexes in Cairo. And ten months after that, in more in nearby Thebes, the buildings were home to about 500 people, and most of them ended up leaving the area to find housing. The strap was livid. Not at HUD's decisions to look down buildings long past their prime but the fact that HUD would not commit to replacing even a small fraction of what had been lost asterisk the rings. Federal officials promised they would do what they could to put the public housing that remained in Cairo, including the high-rise where Logan lives, 
at least 14 families forced out of the demolished homes moved into the Smith Building. And residents were hopeful that President Joe Biden's administration might take a different approach. Listening to residents in Cairo. Last month's announcement is another broken promise in a long line. Here we go again. A frustrated Thomas Simpson, Cairo's mayor, quipped on his way out the door of the meeting with HUD officials. He's working with other community leaders to open a co-op grocery store. And he's hopeful that plans to find a new inland river port in town. A development that Gov. J. B. Pritzker has committed $40 million in state funds toward. Will boost the region's economy. Cairo's mayor, Thomas Simpson, would like HUD to make up with a plan to keep residents of the agency's buildings in Cairo. Julia Rendelman for ProPublica. But HUD's continued gutting of his community makes it hard to pay a step ahead. He said, after more than seven years under HUD control, the local housing authority has not managed to replace a single unit in his town. The mayor believes HUD has overstated the roller's need for people to move. HUD does not typically assess seismic risk. It ordered an architectural assessment after an agency official noticed cracks in the building in 2021. The study identified problems but did not make any recommendations. And there's no HUD policy that dictates what is an acceptable seismic risk for a public housing property. He'd like to see the agency slow down and come up with an alternative solution. Here is already on the table. A problem with extensive affordable housing experience has offered HUD a plan to build a 40-unit housing community in Cairo at the site of one of the previously demolished homes. The extra $5 million needed for the project already exists in the housing authority's coffers. And the developer who pitched the solution, Nashville, Tennessee-based U.S. Management Services is already under contract with HUD to develop a long-term plan for the housing authority and its tenants in Iraq. The owner of the development company told HUD he could complete the Cairo project in six months by shipping in manufactured homes. But while a HUD official later told me that the project hasn't been rejected outright, he said that the deal is more complicated than meets the eye. More detailed questions, he said would have to be directed to HUD's spokesperson. Christina Wilkes, HUD's press secretary, did not specifically respond to my questions about the proposed development. In an emailed response, she said the agency is committed to partnering with the mayor and community leaders to develop a jack for the drive, based upon the mayor's vision. The mayor, however, said HUD only notified him of its plan to demolish the Smith building a few hours before notifying. The way, even over the agency first noticed problems with the D-pad more than a year ago. He wants the agency to pursue all viable options to keep two in Cairo. If the agency goes ahead with the plan to move people out of the high-rise, those residents will take their vouchers with them, leaving insufficient funding for the new units. On the convenience that HUD broke the news, the residents and other community leaders packed into the meeting room shoulder to go. People spilled into the unit. A few residents shed tears. Others begged HUD officials to come up with another one. Community leaders admonished the agency for the pain it has caused the town. Philip Matthews, a pastor and community activist, stood up stared the officials down and told them to ship this message to their superiors in Washington on severity of the bad. It's not happening this time. This was not an easy decision. A defensive HUD official fired back. If you think this was, you're sorely mistaken. At the meeting, a HUD official promised to share the town residents' concerns with higher-ups in Washington. But the KXTG 2730 has not backed off of its ability to move people from the building in Cairo. Located in Alexander County, when the safety of the HUD-assisted residents is our top priority and moving them to safe housing. As good as possible is our focus at this time. If there is any future AKA housing, 
It would allow former Aka residents the first priority to audio. Wilkes. The HUD spokesperson said. Not to the Alexander County Housing Authority that is in receivership. In two fans that solved that tense meeting. Residents and community leaders have fought back in the state's attorney filed a lawsuit challenging that HUD had not followed its own requirements for when a public housing property is going to be demolished. That resulted in a county judge issuing a temporary restraining order, which has since expired. The case was then transferred to federal court, but it is pending. HUD has maintained that it hasn't violated any grill or regulations with its announcement. Political leaders wrote letters to HUD advocating for the town, and residents say they plan to flood a housing authority board meeting next week, where HUD officials are expected to officially vote on the plan. Kanisha Mallory, who lives in the building slated for demolition with her two-year-old daughter Brichelle, is holding out hope that HUD will have a change of heart. She's lived in other places but never get the same sense of belonging. This is home. My roots are here in Cairo. She said, if you move anywhere else, you won't find nowhere else like Cairo. Kanisha Mallory and her two-year-old daughter live in the building slated for demolition. Julia Rendelman for ProPublica.